Perth's 96 of M Potts with you backstage at Soundwave as we welcome back to Perth. Panic at the Disco. Good day to front man Brendan Yuri. Hello, buddy. Hello, hello. How's welcome, it going? Welcome back to Australia. And hey, why wouldn't you want to come back to oh. Australia this time of year compared to uh, the Northern Hemisphere winter? Yeah, it's amazing. It's it's pretty nice being over here. We just finished a tour where we're having a pretty bad snowstorm in the states. Uh, so this is really awesome to come back here, play these shows in the weather that we actually enjoy. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And congrats on your latest album, Mark. Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die. Debut at number two in the US, number 26 here yeah. in Australia. Have you had a chance to road test many of the new songs? How are the crowds reacting to them? Yeah, it's been nice. Um, we just finished uh, like four months of tour in the States. It's been phenomenal. It's been really great. You know, like we've had... Uh, a really good reaction to the new stuff, which you never know how that's going to go. Yeah, exactly. You know? But uh, yeah, it's been amazing so far. And honestly, like I'm kind of excited for today too because the the lineups here are kind of insane. I'm a huge fan of most of the bands that are playing, so I'm really just trying to get our set over with so I can go watch the other bands. You know? <laughs> I was going to say that. Do you get a chance at these type of festivals to go out and check some of the other bands that are on the lineup? Yeah, sometimes. And they're also, they have like huge pythons running around. I didn't say that, yeah. Did, and, have you uh, held one of those yet? Yeah. I'm trying to bring one on stage. I'm seeing if, oh. I, if I can convince them. <laughs> I see a snake moshing in the front. Don't be alarmed. It's just the panic at the disco set. I'm just going to helicopter it around my head. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's go back to your early days. Uh, I was reading that you started off your career as a bit of a, a Blink-182 cover band is that right <laughs> kind of yeah like uh when i when i joined the band as a guitar player we didn't really have any original material so to audition for the band you know you play music that we all know so it was like blink 182 and just a bunch of pop punk bands you know yeah. you just end up playing that to be like oh, okay yeah you're good enough Beautiful. which i don't know why we play blink 182 the songs aren't that hard but, oh they're great uh, songs though, aren't they're they beautiful the crowd going, they are they? amazing and really that's how i I became the singer because I was singing the songs. Oh, yeah. They were like, oh, okay, well, you can be the singer then. Yeah, over <laughs> to you. And and eventually you got to play on stage with Blink-182 as well. That must have been a spin out. So crazy. That's wow. still like one of the most surreal experiences. I'm like the biggest fan still. So yeah. from the time I was like 10 years old, I had Cheshire Cat and Buddha and like first albums I ever bought. Yeah, I, I have such an, an, an insane respect for Blink-182. They're yep. like not only just an amazing band, funny live, but like really good dudes. Yeah, like yeah. They actually hung out and were very personable backstage. Unreal. Like so cool. Did you get to sing a Blink-182 song on stage with the guys? Did they give you a microphone and say, Brendan, come up? I think they gave me a, like an invitation, but I was way too nervous at that point. <laughs> I was like, no way, dude. I don't want to mess up your set. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, Soundwave here, it's one of the better festivals going around. Yeah. Um, and we don't expect any hooligans in the crowd to be throwing stuff, but was Reading, Reading Festival 2006, you got hit with a bottle? Yeah, I got right? knocked out. And it, it KO'd you. Yeah, KO'd. Totally knocked out. It was a TKO. Yeah, I mean, I was out for like two minutes, and then uh, apparently, because I saw the video, apparently I was out for a couple of minutes. I woke up, and the rest of the band was off stage, and I just went over, I was like, what happened? Yeah. Like, Yo, you got knocked out, dude. And I was like, all right, well, can, do we have time to finish our set? And you got back on a fight. Yeah, we finished it. That's we were unreal. only 30 seconds into our first song. I was like, ah, we're not going to... We're not going to walk off stage. That's lame. Nah, nah. Too many people came to watch us. So we went back up and just, we did it, man. And the, ever since then, they haven't really thrown bottles. So. The, the guy who got uh, who threw the bottle probably got knocked out as well by I, someone in the crowd, I surely. I think so. I mean, well, whatever. Yeah, we don't <laughs> want that kind of stuff. Uh, let's go back to 2008. Uh, the yeah. exclamation after panic was dropped. Was that because you couldn't fit it in your Twitter handle? Or was there some <laughs> other silly reason for it? Or what was the story? It's funny, like... We didn't really think too much about it. We're like, oh, I think we were just like way too high one day. We just <laughs> forgot to put it in. Yeah, yeah. But uh, after a while, I got so much attention. We're like, yeah, let's have fun with this. So we kept it out. We brought it back. We kept it out. But I, I missed it, to be honest. Yeah. I, I like having it in the name. It just makes it more fun. Exactly. It makes it stand out. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the merchandise from those days with not the exclamation on it, we've worth a bit of money these days. Uh, so. Yeah, it's a very rare, <laughs> very rare thing. <laughs> now, uh, 2009, uh, Ryan and John left the band. You uh -huh. guys you guys still talk to those guys? Is the relationship still there? or it's, it's I haven't talked to uh, Ryan or John in, like, almost two years. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I tried. Like, I, you know, we talked for a few months afterwards, you know, here and there. But, honestly, it's been... Um, yeah, almost two years since yeah. we've like really talked. Yeah, I, tr I tried to hang out and then you know we never got responses, so I was like, eh, yeah, I don't care. Move on. Yeah. Move on. Yeah, uh, you've been to Perth a few times now. Um, yeah. Do you get much time off in Perth? Have you ever experienced much to we, do in Perth? Or? We had one day, uh, but it wasn't enough time because we had to leave that night. We had to fly out to go back home. But um, yeah, it was. I mean, it's just beautiful. I love Australia. I just yeah. love coming over here. Like, everybody just seems to be on a different level musically, you know? Like, especially when you play the festivals over here, it's like, there's like a deeper appreciation. People just want to have a good time, you know? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's super chilled out. 
It's like it kind of just reminds me of home, like California, a little bit. You know, it was just like are we the drunkest crowd though, <laughs> in the world? We love having. You a drink. might be in competition for the drunkest crowds, <laughs> but that just means you have a good time. <laughs> and what happens uh, after Soundwave, of course, wraps up in Perth. Um, yeah. Do you get to stay for a few days, or are you off on another tour somewhere? What's happening? Uh, yeah, we got to fly home. We have a couple uh, little one-off shows in the states, but then we get like two weeks off, oh, so cool. that's good. And then. Uh, Five more months of tour. Beautiful. Australia, <laughs> Beautiful. Living the life of a rock star. <laughs> Just doing it. <laughs> Brendan from Panic at the Disco, thanks for your time, buddy. Looking forward yeah. to seeing you guys on stage Monday, March 3 at Arena Journal Up. Uh, this is 96 FM. And if you want to see Panic at the Disco early in the afternoon, get there, dance around, and don't throw bottles like a dickhead. <laughs> thanks.